Yeah, the short answer is there definitely is a path. It's a realistic path. The way it would happen would be if Ireland's national baseball team, which is not affiliated with this team, uh, with the Wolfhounds, but if Ireland's national baseball team set out to put together a team that could do well in the European championships, um, they would essentially have to win their current pool, which is the they're at the lower level of European baseball. They would need to win that, and then they would need to place somewhere in the middle of the pack in the higher level, which is called the A pool. Hello, and welcome to episode 60 of the Irish Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Rick Becker. You just heard John Fitzgerald, founder of the Irish American Baseball Society, talking about a common topic on the show in recent months. Ireland's chances of making the World Baseball Classic. John is on the show today to discuss an event coming up next month in New York that could provide a blueprint for making it to the WBC. Let's welcome John Fitzgerald right now. Thanks for being back on the show, John. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me. So we are going to talk about another one of those big things coming up with the Irish American Baseball Society. And this is an actual game that actual people can go see with actual Irish baseball players, which we don't get as much of that as you would like here in the United States, but also for us to promote Irish baseball, it's great to have something like this happening over here in the States. So why don't you talk about what is coming up in the near future, John? Yeah, like what's more Irish baseball than Irish people playing baseball, right? This is a team called the Irish Wolfhounds. It is composed of players that uh, have played in college or professionally that um, hold or qualify for Irish citizenship. And the reason for that is kind of the, the core founding principle of this team is that we believe Ireland has more than enough talent to qualify for the World Baseball Classic. And that's why the team is, is constructed the way it is with the same uh, eligibility requirements as the World Baseball Classic. So it's uh, it's an exciting team. It's an exciting idea. It's going to be one game on June 17th against the um, NYPD's All-Stars. And these guys from the NYPD, they can play. They're, they're uh, mostly um, college and former college and pro guys. These are, you know, they work for the NYPD. Um, so they have day jobs, but they're ball players, and um, they've played Team Israel. I believe they've played Team Italy. They've played all over the world. They're a very good team. So we're not taking it lightly. We um, we chose them, uh, or they actually they chose us, uh, and we gladly accepted because they are such a reputable uh, baseball organization. So everybody just got to witness this fantastic world baseball classic. I know that the world baseball classic has been around for a few years now since back in 2006, but this was the coming out party this year. And after the rankings were released post world baseball classic, Ireland was, I want to say 52. Yeah. So, John, is there a path from being ranked number 52 in the world to making it to this level of the World Baseball Classic? Yeah, the short answer is there definitely is a path. It's a realistic path. And the way it would happen would be if Ireland's national baseball team, which is not affiliated with this team, uh, with the Wolfhounds, but if Ireland's national baseball team set out to put together a team that could do well in the European championships um they would essentially have to win their current pool which is the they're at the lower level of european baseball they would need to win that and then they would need to place somewhere in the middle of the pack in the higher level which is called the a pool the reason they would have to place in the middle of the pack rather than win the a pool is because there's already i think there's four or five teams from europe that have already made it uh, to the next world baseball classic qualifying round so off the top of my head, those are Italy, the Netherlands, Czech Republic, and uh, Great Britain. And I, it, Spain might be there, too. So those teams are already in. So Ireland doesn't have to beat those teams. They just have to come in right after those teams. Um, and as far as, you know, if it's a realistic thing for them to do it, from a time perspective, it is. And from a talent perspective, it definitely is. I mean, we, we know the talents here. Um, I've personally recruited uh, over 
three dozen players in the last uh, five years. Um, and I know of, of many more players that other people either recruited or, or players that have shown interest that have citizenship or could get citizenship that are playing currently in college or, or professional baseball. And when you talk about qualifying for the World Baseball Classic, the qualifying round is not, you're not going to play Japan and you're not going to play um, Canada or the U.S., you're going to play Pakistan. Uh, you know, you're going to play teams that have very good organizations and have worked very hard to get where they are, but they don't have the level of college and professional players that Ireland would have access to. Um, so, so we do believe from a time perspective and from a uh, talent perspective, this is uh, it's a slam dunk. I think that's a very important distinction that you make because when we look at those final games, from the World Baseball Classic, and you look at that Japan team that was just, they just did everything well, honestly. And then the U.S. team that could just rake, and maybe they didn't have the pitching, but that's a whole nother conversation. And the Dominican team, which didn't even make it all that far, considering all their talent. But you don't have to be that we all saw the story of the guy who was like an electrician by day and struck out Shohei Otani at night. And Ireland could potentially have players who are every bit as talented as them. It's about getting into the tournament. It's not necessarily about winning it at any point in the near future. You're just talking about being represented like Australia is now being represented and Italy is represented and maybe they're not going to compete for the championship, but they're there. They're in the tournament. They have a chance to make the tournament. And I think it is important to make that distinction. I think a great example is China. When you see that China team who is putting 19 year old kids up against Japan, they qualified for this tournament. They have baseball that's good enough for this tournament. Now, when you see them against Japan, they don't look like they do, but there is a next level that isn't necessarily competing with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani. Yeah. And, and that qualifying round would be hugely important because each stage of the world baseball classic comes with a certain amount of grant money that would then go towards developing the game of baseball in that country. So, you know, if Ireland were to make it to the qualifying round and then qualify for the world baseball classic, um, I don't have those numbers, but I know, that at a certain point, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of money from Major League Baseball would then flow into Ireland. And so it's important to keep that in mind because uh, essentially this is about galvanizing the Irish American community behind Team Ireland and having a purpose for that, uh, which, you know, from a player's perspective, it's incredible. It's an incredible honor to do that. Uh, many of these guys on the Wolfhounds have um, have played for Team Ireland. And I know many of them personally, and I know their families, and I know how much it, it means to them. But it's also important. It, it's important to understand that I think the probably you mentioned a bunch of countries there. I think Italy's a, a, a great template um, to, to look at. They've got a, a fantastic domestic program. Um, but I think the best uh, representation of what Ireland's path would kind of look like would be Great Britain. Um, in 1996, Ireland played its first international competition, and they played it in England, and Great Britain was there. Great Britain was the favorite, and I believe they won that tournament. Ireland finished, I think, second to last, but it was their first time. At that time, the, the British Baseball uh, Federation decided that they were going to embark on a, a path of basically getting a lot of uh, dual citizens to advance their national team and then use that to inspire kids to play baseball. And that's really been kind of our um, mantra is that if you have a successful national baseball program, which Ireland had about 15 years ago, uh, then you can inspire more kids to play and you can actually inspire more Irish Americans to support that financially. Uh, and, and it's so it's kind of like a, a, a virtuous cycle. It, it just keeps, you know, the team keeps getting better. The kids playing baseball have more access to fields, more access to equipment in Ireland, and it just keeps feeding upon itself. Um, but the, the other important thing I keep circling around this is that when you when you see Great Britain, they had, I think, one player who was born in England and 
I think he grew up or played high school baseball in the U S. Um, so they, they had all dual citizens. Now, if Ireland were to do the same thing and have all dual citizens or, or, or close to it, the dual citizens that Ireland would get have a much closer uh, affinity or, or um, connection to Ireland and to Irish culture. And that's pretty much across the board. We've made that case for years. Um, I started the under 18 junior national team. I've helped uh, finance or, you know, fundraise for and, and recruit for the men's national team in the past. And, you know, that's the case we always make is that you, when you see a German kid on uh, the German national team, if he grew up in America, he may have strong ties, but you can't find as many Irish Americans or Irish Canadians um, that, uh, you know, can play baseball. You, you just can't find that, that level of talent that actually has a strong connection to the home country. Um, and those connections range from everything from players that were born in Ireland that grew up and are now playing, grew up in the U S and are now playing college baseball to, um, you know, players that have a parent or a grandparent and they went back to Ireland as kids back and forth, back and forth, but they were playing in high school, they played in college and now they're in the pros. So there, there's just so many players that have such a strong connection and to kind of dismiss them as, you know, the, these are American ball players that are just kind of uh, ringers. Um, I don't think it's fair. I know many of these families uh, and, and players personally, not, not only from the Wolfhounds team, but just from years past, like players that no longer play baseball. Maybe they went to college and, and stopped playing or, you know, got injured or, or just, you know, got older and stopped playing. But um, they're so proud of what, of representing Ireland and they want to give back. And um, we feel like baseball classic is the next logical step for that. If Great Britain is the template for Ireland to follow and have success, at least we know one thing is 100% factual, and that is if Ireland does make it that far to the World Baseball Classic, they are definitely going to have better jerseys than Great Britain had in that tournament because those were a hot mess. Literally, just get the Irish baseball jersey that you can get right now in the shop at the Irish American baseball society. And that is a nicer looking Jersey than the ones that great Britain wore in that tournament. That was just kind of a funny side note. So to pull this back to what we are going to get the chance to witness here in June with the Irish wolfhounds, how does this kind of relate to building Irish baseball, even though it is not associated with the national team? What we're trying to do is just let people know that there is a very high level of talent that is eligible to play for Team Ireland. And if Team Ireland is successful, there's there are other players that that may not be on the Wolfhounds roster because they're already playing for affiliates, uh, affiliated baseball, and um, they would be able to join you know during the qualifying stage. And, and so there's so much talent. There's so many interested players and and we want to make sure that people know that this talent is out there. They want to play for Ireland. They want to um, get to the world baseball classic. And, uh, and, and we hope that, uh, that it inspires people to, to say, Hey, you know, th this is something that, that I can get behind as a baseball fan, you know, as an Irish American that, uh, you know, I want to see Ireland in the world baseball classic. Uh, but, but even, you know, more in a more short term, a very short term, you can see these these players play and you can you can root for them you can learn more about them and we do intend to continue this um this is going to be a one off exhibition this year but uh, we we'd certainly plan to uh continue this next year with more games and um potentially take the team on the road so that's really what what this is kind of moving towards it is a situation where we continue to to find new players we continue to kind of shine a light on them and and, and show that that this talent is here and they're just waiting for the call so that they can play for Team Ireland. And what is just a generic resume for some of these players who are going to be on the Irish Wolfhounds? What does the typical career look like of some of these players? All of them either play currently or have played college baseball. Um, we have, uh, we've got one former major leaguer, Ryan O'Rourke, who pitched for the Orioles and the Mets uh, as recently as a couple of years ago. We've got former minor leaguers. We've got um, 
guys that, that play or have played division one, division two, II, division three, all from all over the country. And, um, these are, these are quality baseball players. This is, uh, it, it's hard to say, you know, where they would rank, would they be, you know, like an independent minor league team? Would they be a little bit better than that? A little bit lower than that? Um, they're just quality ball players that play all over the place. And um, we've got a, a fantastic coaching staff. They, they won't have much time to, to do much with this team because it's a, it's a one-off game, but um, we've got a coaching staff that believes very strongly in the concept of giving back to the game and, and uh, helping grow baseball in Ireland and helping these guys, uh, you know, in, in their efforts to, to play for team Ireland and, um, and get Ireland to the WBC. And we've got, we've got players that are just, you know, they, some of them play for the under 18 junior national team. Um, some of them played for uh, the men's team in Ireland. M many of them have won gold medals for Ireland. Um, so it, it's, it's an exciting time for them because it, it's something that they get to do where, you know, at, at times they've played for Ireland in other countries um i know they've played in hungary they've played in um uh, switzerland um they've played in ireland uh but they've never gotten to uh represent their heritage in america so i think it means a lot for a, a lot of these guys and with how much focus you are putting on the world baseball classic as an eventual goal Every time I have you on the show, I kind of want to plug membership in the organization because I think it's important with some of these steps that you are taking and the Irish American Baseball Society is taking. Would it be fair to say that getting a membership in the organization, if one day Ireland is in the World Baseball Classic, you would be able to take a small bit of credit for that as a member because we are really trying to push that ball forward. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, that, that, that is one of our core stated goals is to help Ireland get to the World Baseball Classic and the Olympics. So, um, and, and we have other goals like, like helping a, a kid in Ireland, uh, you know, one day seeing some kids in Ireland play college baseball in the U.S. So any of those things or building a baseball field in Ireland. Uh, just by becoming a member, you can, you can say you're a part of it, but you could also get involved in it too. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're a member, even if you're not a member, come out to the ballpark, uh, the aptly named Clover Stadium on June 17th. Uh, that's when the game is. And, if, you know, become a member, come out to the ballpark, check it, check out the game, you know, root for the Wolfhounds. It's the first time they're ever going to play. Um, and, uh, you know, th the Wolfhounds themselves are a goal. I mean, it, it, this team, we're hoping this team becomes kind of a staple of the uh, independent baseball circuit over the years. And um, it, it could become like a Savannah bananas type of thing, but with like real baseball. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it could be really fun. And, and we've, we've actually talked about like, you know, how does this team look in, in five years or 10 years? And um, you may have seen on our website, we have a, a goal of a, a professional Irish baseball team. And, you know, this could be, the, the forerunner of that maybe in, in five or 10 years, we have a team in a European league and it's made up of uh, Irish citizens. And um, I think that's a, it's something that right now doesn't look realistic, but we've got a team right now that can play baseball and, and uh, we're just looking for places to put them and, and uh, we need the fan support. So if you can get out to the ballpark on June 17th, it's uh, in Rockland County, New York, the big high, Irish uh, hotbed. There's a lot of Irish people up there and, and we expect uh you know the stadium to be full and it, it should be a great time and and if you can uh if you can support the cause by becoming a member and coming out and rooting for the team that's great if you're not sure what this is all about become a member after the game come out first if you want but whatever you do root for the team these are a great bunch of ball players and um they're they've got uh, rich history with uh, ireland Many of them are gold medal winners, and, and uh, it would be great if the Irish American community could, could really throw its weight behind this team um, because we, we have big plans. We hope to take this team on the road next year. So if people want to go to this game, if we've sold them on it, can they get tickets online? Can they just show up the day of the game? Do they have to download the MLB ballpark app? Like, how are we getting people into the stadium? Well, you, you can certainly show up on the day of, um, but uh, if you become a member... Or, or follow us on social media, 
we uh, we've got links to the tickets. We, you know, we we keep uh, putting them out there. We're going to do some giveaways as well. Uh, but uh, you know, it's a ten dollar ticket. And uh, you know, if you've got ten friends, you know, throw a hundred dollars in, bring a bunch of people. We all have big families. Most of us have big families, and if we don't have <laughs> lots of friends, and, and like everyone who you know, you, you may have a bunch of friends who aren't Irish, but just bring them out to the ballpark, and uh, you know, they can root for the NYPD if they want. But um, we, we just we want the stadium to be filled, and the NYPD is the other side of the equation. These guys are are. You know, police officers, and they they play the game well. They're they're very accomplished, and so you're going to see two sides uh, of a great game. And um, you know, we think it's going to be an exciting game, and it's in a minor league ballpark. So, uh, you know, this isn't uh, like a men's league league game on a high school field. This is a, an actual ballpark, and it's Irish night for the New York Boulders. So the game's going to happen. Then the bowlers are going to take the field and there's going to be an Irish night. I don't know exactly what that entails this year, but I know in years past we've uh, we've had a presence there and, and it's been a good time. So um, it should be a great time. I, I highly recommend it if you can make it out there. John Fitzgerald, founder of the Irish American Baseball Society. Thank you so much for being back on the show. Thanks, Rick. The Irish Wolfhounds will take on the NYPD All-Stars on June 17th at Clover Park. To get tickets, head to irishbaseball.org. I'm Rick Becker, and this has been episode 60 of the Irish Baseball Podcast.